Joined on the live line by Bill Rabinowitz of the Dispatch, talking a little uh, Buckeye football. Bill, actually, before we get into Ohio State, I was just mentioning the Andrew Luck retirement, and I know you uh, are a football fan and follow the NFL. How shocking was that to you, to this 29-year-old, one of the best at his craft, uh, has decided to just step away from football and call it a career? Yeah, it's, it's, it was certainly surprising. I was actually out of town on, on Saturday, and I got back, and I saw it, and I was like, wow. And then I saw why, and then I, you know, look, this is, as I tweeted, this is a, a very demanding game physically and mentally and in every way, and it takes a toll on you. And so anyone who can walk away on their own terms, I give them credit. I, I do too, and you know there that that is I think the take of most people. But it it was a little disappointing that Colts fans booed him and uh, Doug Gottlieb of FS1 with a, you know it's such a millennial thing to you know it, because it's too hard to rehab you know whatever dude. I, if I were in that who, if I were in that yeah. position and had an opportunity to do what Andrew Luck did, I would do the same thing. Yeah, from a guy who got uh, tossed out of Notre Dame for stealing credit cards, right? Yes, that's uh, right. Yep. That's why he ended up going from Notre Dame to Oklahoma State and play basketball. Well, we got you on to talk uh, Ohio State football. If I asked you right now the biggest question mark in your mind about the 2019 Buckeyes, Bill Rabinowitz, what is it? Well, it's how quickly will Justin Fields develop. Uh, We know he's got the talent. We know he's going to be good. It's just how fast can he get there. And you can't force feed certain things. You just have to let... You know, guys learn and make mistakes, and Ryan Day understands that. You know, he knows that Dwayne Haskins had two years in the system before he had to really play, and obviously he got a, a huge uh, uh, tune-up or whatever you want to call it when, when he filled in for uh, J.T. Barrett against Michigan and laid Ohio State back. So he came in with a, a little you know, body of, uh, a little bit of body record there. And so Justin Fields just got here in January, and it's just, you know, it's just gonna. There are gonna be some bumps in the road because there are certain things he doesn't know he hasn't experienced. Um, but I think that, given the alternative, I mean, you know, would you rather have Tate Martell as your quarterback who couldn't win the job at Miami? I think that they came out of that process as well as they could have. It's just a matter of okay, can they survive the the growing pains right away? And so, um, but I, I think Justin Fields is going to be very good. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, I'm interested, Bill, to see also what Ryan Day and the offensive staff, Kevin Wilson, decide to do. What what kind of offense we are going to see? I, with due respect to Gunnar Hoke and Chris Chuganoff, um, there is a lack of depth at quarterback this year that we haven't had at Ohio State the past few years. There's always been another guy there that you felt, you know, you didn't want to lose your starter, but you felt like there was somebody there that could step in. I don't know that they feel that way. And one of the strengths of Justin Fields is his legs. How much do you run this guy? Do you lean more on uh, J.K. Dobbins to carry the ball when you want to run the football? I, I'm fascinated to see how this offense manages because you don't want to take away the kid's strength running the ball, but you got to be smart about it, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and my beat partner, Joey Kaufman, did a story on this um, the other day and you know, kind of looking at that because, yes, it is one of his strengths, but you also know that you – you don't want to put him at undue risk. And so I think the vast majority of of what he will um, do in terms of, of running is uh, improvised run scrambles and things like that. So I do think that, you know, they have to be very careful because, as you said, I don't, I, Gunnar Hoke you know, has been here. You think Justin Fields doesn't have experience here. Yeah. Gunnar Hoke got here in June. So uh, that's, that's something that they really don't want to have to, to – in a, in a, in a uh, tight game situation, I I definitely think they want to get Gunnar Hoke in if they if they get it if there's a blowout against Florida Atlantic, but not in a situation where okay win the game. Visiting with Bill Rabinowitz of the Dispatch, Buckeyes open the season Saturday at noon in the stadium uh, against Florida Atlantic. I want to flip to the other side of the ball because as great a year as Ohio State had last year, winning a Rose Bowl, thirteen and one, and finishing number three in the country, the defense was at times historically bad with uh, some of the numbers that were put up against them. And Ryan Day comes in and changes the defensive staff. The only person on that defensive staff that's still here is Larry Johnson. What expectations do you have for this Ohio State defense that struggled so much last year? 
I think it'll be better. I think it'll be significantly better just from from what I'm hearing about the scheme, what I'm hearing about the players' resolve, the fact that there is a talent, there a lot of talent on that defense. And I think there was a disconnect last year between the coaches and between the coaches and the players in terms of the communication. There was just something off. I mean, just the way the players aligned, the way the linebackers lined up last year, uh, the scheme, the technique, there was something just wrong. And, you know, Greg Shadow is the defensive coordinator. Greg Shadow is a very good coach. I'm not, I'm not ripping Greg Shadow as a coach, but something happened last year where they just didn't, they were not on the same page. And I think that Greg Madison takes his role as coordinator very, very seriously. Jeff Halfley brought in from the NFL where he coached with Ryan Day with the 49ers is considered one of the best uh, coaches around, especially younger coaches. And, and players, just you can tell by the way they talk about him that they feel really confident. Um, they're going to throw some zone coverage into the mix. I think they'll still be a pre- predominantly man-to-man press defense in terms of pass coverage, but the fact that they will, they will mix it up will give offensive quarters and quarterbacks pause. I mean, you can't just assume they're going to play a certain, a certain style. Uh, I think Larry Johnson really likes the, the idea of defensive linemen going north-south and not kind of occupying blockers as much as they had to last year. Uh, and they've got talent. Chase Young is, a, is going to be a high first round draft pick next year. Uh, Jeff Okuda, assuming he goes pro next year, should be a first round pick if he plays as well as, as his talent indicates he should. Damon Arnett looks like a different guy than, than a year ago. Um, you know, the linebackers are question mark to some degree because they didn't play very well, but uh, Tough Borland should be healthier. Uh, Baron Browning has come on. There's a lot of competition there. They're going to rotate some guys there. But Lee Harrison played very well, especially at the end of the last year. So, you know, he's a guy they can build around. Um, I, you know, they have to prove it. There's no question. They have to prove it. And there'll be a lot of eyes on them and a lot of scrutiny, as there should be. But I do think it'll be a better defense. You know, at the uh, Big Ten media days, now they, they don't take an official poll because the Big Ten doesn't do that. But, uh, there are a lot of media people that believe that uh, Michigan is the favorite in the Big Ten over Ohio State. However, if you look at the national polls, Ohio State is ranked ahead of Michigan in both the coaches and uh, in the AP poll. Uh, Bill, as you sit there and look at it, is Ohio State, in your mind, the favorite in the Big Ten again? I, I think they are. I, I didn't vote in, the, in that poll. Um, uh, I, I do think they are for a couple reasons. One is they are the defending champion. They I, they beat Michigan you know, seven in a row. Yep. Um, and I think they're in awe at Michigan's head. I mean, I think 62-39 is going to linger with Michigan for a long time. And, you know, Michigan's good. The Michigan should be very good. But they also lost maybe, you know, four of their best players on defense. I mean, four really, really good players on defense. And the guy that they consider their offensive senior now, Josh Gaddis, because the Harbaugh's apparently turned the, the keys to him, He's never really called plays, and so there's a lot of scrutiny on him. You know, Shea Patterson is a good quarterback. Is he a great quarterback? I haven't seen it yet. Um, obviously, a lot of people are picking Michigan because the game is in, in Ann Arbor, and that's fair enough. And, and look, I'm, it's pretty close to a toss-up in my mind. It's not like Ohio State's clearly better. And You know, that's the fun of this, is that we don't know. Yeah. And the fun of the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry is that uh, you go through this whole year and you kind of look at the other team and you go, well, how do we stack up? How do we stack up the whole year? And last year, by the time we got to the game, most people, including me, thought, well, Michigan's a better team right now. And we saw what happened. Uh, Ohio State still has the best talent in the Big Ten. They've recruited the best. Uh, they developed their players well. They have confidence about them, especially against against Michigan. Um, you know, I'm not saying Michigan couldn't be the Big Ten champion. It couldn't beat Ohio State. Of course they can. But to me, it's until they, until they prove it, I'll, I'll stick with what I've seen. Yeah, Bill, I'm I'm right with you. Uh, until they do it, I can't pull the trigger and pick them. Uh, I, I just can't. So I think Ohio State, I agree with you, is the favorite. That's Bill Rabinowitz of the Dispatch talking Ohio State football. And again, the opener is just five days away against Florida Atlantic. 